Hey everybody, this morning I'm in Avon, Indiana, and specifically I'm in Avon Town Hall Park, which is really one of my favorite parks around. I don't get to spend much time here at all, so if I'm over filming in Avon a lot of times, I like to come into this park just because it is a sweet place and a really incredible park, especially for the size of Avon. But in this video today, we're gonna talk about really the one problem that I can see with living in Avon. Now you could have a lot of problems, of course, but you have a lot of good things about Avon. But this one here just always jumps out at me as something that could be a problem for you. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in a place like Avon, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, or any of the cities and towns that surround Indy, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. And we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions about Avon, Indiana, or nearby Brownsburg, just to the north, or Plainfield, just to the south, and of course, off to the east, Indianapolis, Indiana. So if you have questions at all about any of those places, and maybe what kind of problem that might jump up whenever living there that you couldn't have seen before you actually moved there, then make sure you reach out to us any way you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back when it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro. All right guys, again, I'm in Avon, Indiana, in Avon Town Hall Park. This is a huge park and it is a bright, bright sunny day. So kind of hard to <laughs> look over this direction because the sun is, is so bright, but it has walking trails galore that goes way back up over this hill. There's a disc golf course. There's a huge fishing lake. Just over here, I can actually see somebody beyond the trees over there fishing and an incredibly large park, especially for Avon, which not even 20,000 people. They've got some really nice parks here. Definitely do. Avon actually has a lot going for it, a whole lot going for it. Really high quality, highly rated schools. You've got places like this. So of course, Avon's not all that big, which means you can't really live all that far from a park like this. Not everybody gets to ride their bike or walk to a park, but it's pretty nice when you don't have to really drive all that far to get to a pretty sweet park like this. And spend maybe just a little bit of time, like 30 minutes or an hour or something like that with your kids or just yourself. And you can walk all over this place. So I'm gonna walk around this little pond just to kind of get in a little bit of the shade so you can chat about really the one thing that I can see about living in Avon that could be problematic. Now, me personally, don't live in Avon, but I would certainly live in Avon because it has a lot of great things going for it, like I just said. The one thing that I could see about Avon that could be problematic for a person like myself who is in the car a lot, I am all over the place. It honestly doesn't matter where I live because I'm always likely going to be somewhere else. I'm always gonna be in another city or town around Indianapolis, if not in Indianapolis. Probably for me, the best location would be as central as possible. That way I'm just not close to anything, but also not that far from anything. But other people, like my wife, who works at a physical location, needs to be really close to that. So that could happen with you, and you could be over here in Avon because physically it's the best place for you to live. Wow, it's gotten really dark in here. There are some unbelievable trees. This is a giant sycamore tree just off to my right here. Huge sycamore. Awesome tree. I love trees. So for yourself, or you might just be open and think, well, maybe Avon's a good place. Highly rated schools, not too big, not too small, seems close to everything. And you have Rockville Road, US 36, that goes right through the heart of Avon. And Avon is just kind of all along the north and the south of that particular road. And where I'm standing right now, in Avon Town Hall Park. If you wanted to get back into Indianapolis, it's quite a few miles, but if you wanted to get back into Indianapolis and hit the highway, like I-465 that surrounds Indianapolis, that is over seven miles from here. And the easiest way to get to it is just to go straight down US 36. But when you're on it at the wrong time of day, it's not an easy seven miles. It's stoplight, 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 traffic, traffic, traffic. So when you compare Avon to some of the other suburbs around Indianapolis, like Plainfield to the south, Brownsburg to the north, or, and I'm talking about some of the ones that immediately surround Indianapolis, as in their borders are touching Indianapolis. Carmel on the north side, Fishers on the north side, you get to Greenfield on the east side, Greenwood on the south side. All of those cities actually have a route to Indianapolis that doesn't stop. So if you get into Plainfield, Plainfield's gonna have I-70. It doesn't mean you're always living right on I-70, but if you're in Plainfield, you're not too far from it. You can get to I-70, get right into Indianapolis without stopping. And when I say into Indianapolis, 
Indianapolis. That means you could go into the city kind of deep, like I-70 to take all the way downtown and all the way through Indianapolis, clear on the other side and east of it, and you can take it all the way pretty far east in the United States, just like you could take it west all the way to Denver, Colorado. You get on 70 and boom, you just drive straight out that way. And when you get into Greenwood on the south side, Greenwood has I-65, goes right up into Indianapolis. And it actually has a couple other routes, although they're not stop free. You can have US 31, you can have State Road 135, you can have State Road 37. They're still fairly fast roads and not a tremendous number of stoplights. So they move pretty quickly. They move pretty well for the most part. Plainfield 70, Greenfield is 70, I-70, just straight into the city, no stops. Brownsburg, you can be close to I-74, get right into the city, no stops. And then Carmel, while it doesn't have an interstate, even Zionsville left them out on the northwest side. You can use I-65 to get to 465, or you can just take 65 right into downtown Indianapolis and through Indianapolis all the way to the south. You can go to Louisville, you can go past Louisville, and and on to the deep south of the United States. Carmel has US 31, which has no stops on it anymore. It used to years ago. It used to have tons of stoplights. Now it's just overpasses and you never stop. Keystone Parkway, exactly the same. You won't hit a stoplight until you get into Indianapolis and you get into the 86th Street area in that vicinity and you'll start to see a little bit more. But you get in from Carmel pretty easily on that. You can do it on Hazeldale Parkway, which doesn't have a stoplight south of 146th Street at all. It goes roundabout, 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 roundabout until you get to the last roundabout at 96th Street and you just can't go south anymore. It just stops and you have to go east or west. And like I mentioned over in Greenfield, you got I-70. Even when you get into Fishers, you've got I-69 and State Road 37, which combine. But as you go north on I-69, 69 goes further to the north and actually a little to the east. And then State Road 37 goes up through Fishers and all the way up into Noblesville. And the plan is for that to be stoplight free. It's nearly that, nearly that all the way through Fishers right now, which is, is pretty nice. Doesn't mean you're not gonna hit some traffic on any one of those arteries, any one of them. It's just that all of those cities and towns that surround Indianapolis and touch it, share a border, they've got a stop-free way of getting into the city, whereas Avon does not. And who cares? That might not be a big deal to you at all. And for me personally, it probably would be a bigger deal. If I was living out this far west and I had to get into Indianapolis or someplace on that side of the city, further to the east, I'm gonna run into some issues from time to time. I'm absolutely gonna hit some traffic. And people who live in Avon may not need to worry about that because Rockville Road, while it can be busy, it's still kind of awesome to have it if you live in Avon because it has just about every single thing that you can possibly imagine on. So you need a Target, well, they've got it. If you need a Menards or a Home Depot or a Best Buy or some restaurant either unique to Avon or something that you're gonna find just about anywhere across the United States, Avon has it. You need to get your oil changed, Avon's got it. I mean, absolutely everything right there along Rockville Road. It is one of the more commercialized areas around the whole Indianapolis Metro. So with that though, comes stoplights and traffic. So that could be the only issue, big glaring issue, that I could see living in Avon, but you really didn't think about it before you started looking at Avon as a possibility. So you have to ask yourself, how often am I gonna to need to get into Indianapolis or anywhere else? And if it's not very often, if at all, boy, Avon could be a great place. But if you had to commute a lot, a person like myself, I gotta drive a lot, it could be an issue for me. So it could be a factor in my decision. So if you've got questions about Avon, its location, accessibility, make sure that you reach out anyway you know how. And we'll see you in the next one.